Today on Dr. Phil, the story that made national headlines. Their living nanny refuses to leave. The media dubbed Diane the squatter nanny. For the first time on television. She said you just laid around and did nothing. That's a bald-faced lie. Mother and nanny face off. You yelled at me and told me I was a dog. Did you try to drive her out? No, I didn't. I, I mean, did you blast her with music? That either happened or it didn't. A Dr. Phil exclusive. Have you ever been evaluated? Do you have any mental issues? You are a vicious malicious person. Plus, my sister has sued my family approximately 10 times. She has done horrific things. The nanny's family speaks out. You tried your best to break me, and I am still standing. It's time for you to stop. She was the nanny who was fired from her job, but refused to move out of the house. You've seen the story. It made national headlines when the unthinkable happened to a family, and it has people all over the country talking. Now, Pretty Unlimited in New Jersey tweets, once people ask or tell you to go away from their home, you leave. You don't turn someone's home into your battlefield. Kitty Bradshaw in California tweets, good for the nanny for taking a stand. This will make people think twice before abusing their nannies and maid staff. People are divided. On the one side, we have a mother of three young children who says she wanted nothing more than to find the perfect nanny. And on the other side, a 64-year-old nanny who says she was made false promises and is now evicted. Well, for the first time, the two women face off on this stage, and we are going to get to the bottom of what happened. Take a look. A local couple says their live-in nanny is no longer welcome, but refuses to leave. They say it's hard to hire good help. Well, guess what? It's even harder to fire bad help. Marcella and Ralph Bracamonte hired the 64-year-old woman to help with their three children. First couple of weeks with the nanny were good, and then they say she just stopped working. The couple took Stratton to court, but a judge ruled against them on a technicality and said they needed to file the legal papers again. I'm now a victim in my own home, and it's completely legal. Stretton was not talking at first, but she has since lashed out at the family. When I was working there, I didn't get lunch breaks. I didn't get coffee breaks. Basically, I was working 24-7. She wouldn't do anything. She stayed in her room 90% of the day, so I really did try to work with her. She's moved out at least for now. We found nanny Diane Stratton late last night hiding out in her car. We just want to hear your side of this story. They have lied so much and they have been so mean-spirited in harming me when I gave them way more. I gave them four to five times what they were entitled to and then I get treated like this. Well, the mom in the middle of this mess says all she was looking for was someone to love on her kids and be part of her family. So she posted an ad on Craigslist <laughs> looking for a live-in nanny. I hired a nanny to help my family, and it turned into us being victimized. My husband works quite a bit. I have three children. I was trying to start a new business. It just became overwhelming. I went to Craigslist. I had three people respond to it, and I corresponded with Diane. She seemed the best out of the three. I met Diane. I asked her for a driver's license and her social security number. I did a background check. I asked her to write down three references. All of them gave her rape reviews. When I decided I would hire her, I promised her room and board. Diane's performance at first was good. It all went downhill after three weeks. According to Marcella, the nanny stopped working, stayed in her room, lounged on the couch, and just did nothing all day long. Finally, the family had enough, and that's when they say things turn scary. The past three months with Diane have been an absolute nightmare. She stopped doing everything altogether. So this is the room that Diane stayed in, and that's the chair that she sat in for over eight hours a day. Once I asked her to leave, and she looked at me with that grin of, <laughs> yeah, right kind of look, she said, if you want me to leave, you'll have to evict me. She's on the door. It sent a cold chill down my spine. I got nervous because a woman that is now hateful towards me is sleeping right across from my child. She tried to go in my boy's room and scare them, try to torment them. 
I learned that she ended up grabbing my son, throwing him to the ground, and he hurt himself. It just still makes me sick to my stomach. Diane held us hostage in our home. I was scared and angry. This woman is a bully in every way she could. So this is the bike lock that we would put on our fridge because we were scared of Diane and what she could do. She might poison our food. Some nights I wake up still a lot, three, four in the morning, just listening for any sound. She'll never stop. This room needs to get blessed as soon as possible. I don't think that Dr. Phil is going to be able to get anything out of her. Why? Because she's not right in the head. I think she's a danger to society. She literally is a homeland terrorist. This is my home. This is where we're supposed to feel safe. And I had to sleep with one eye open. OK, so it's good to meet you all. You posted an ad on Craigslist. Yes. And a lot of people would say, not the best place to look for somebody that you're going to put in your home, because you don't know much about those people. But did you check this woman out before you hired her? I did do a background check. I have hired a, not, a prior nanny before off of Craigslist, and I had her for two years. And um, she was amazing, and we're still friends. Well, here's the Craigslist ad that you put up looking for a nanny. It says, when I leave for a couple hours at a time, I need someone with my children. I need backup on keeping my house clean and getting the start on meals for family. I'm looking for someone long term who preferably gets a retirement, who wants to be part of a family. There is no pay, just room and board. Mm -hmm. And how many responses did you get? I got three. You got three? Three. And did you interview three? I t did some phone interviews on the two, and I decided not to go further on the two, and then okay. talked to Diane, and I wanted to meet her. The deal is no pay, but room and board. Right. And okay. th that was because I was going to be doing my work from home, mm -hmm. and I was trying to start a business, and so I was going to be home a lot. Things went along okay for a while. How mm -hmm. long? About a good three weeks. Okay. And then what was your first sign that this isn't going to work? Why I say she was good the first three weeks was because she was very hands-on with my middle child. They were, they were awesome. But besides that, she didn't do anything as far as help me cook, help me clean. And I was just kind of letting it go because she was good with my kid. I didn't want to take someone away from my kid so soon. I was trying to talk to her, give her chances. And then when she got real comfortable with my four-year-old, that's when I started to see the negative part of her come out. That's when I started to see um, she started getting very rough with him as far as verbally rough with him. When I told her to stop, she completely withdrew herself and started staying in her room. And she might come out to wash a few dishes after that. After a couple weeks after that, she stopped washing dishes altogether. Okay. Just a lot of things were changing. And I just had to step in and say something. OK, well, I, I think these are your expectations of, of her as a nanny, to keep the kids busy doing schoolwork, arts and crafts, reading, music, writing, playing in the yard or swimming, an hour of TV mm -hmm. allowed, and then Bible study. Mm -hmm. Those were kind of the things that you valued. That was the, yes, that was the last list I started, I gave her. There was another list, and I, I didn't keep it, I'm sorry. I had given her a list of duties as far as um, helping me Cook, cook, prepare meals, which was on the ad, the Craigslist ad. Mm -hmm. Help me prepare meals, help me clean. These were things to help to keep the, the kids busy. But she wasn't doing any of it. So she wasn't doing what you listed in the ad. And we saw the ad earlier when you said help you get meals started. And Yeah, she was yeah. never there to help me prepare the, meal, <clears throat> prepare the meals, but she was there to eat all the meals. OK, so uh, <laughs> did, did you give her exact hours of what you expected as a nanny? I didn't give her exact hours because the hours always changed. I felt this was a very casual <laughs> agreement. I didn't think it was going to get litigious in any way. It's not working out. And you asked her to move out. Yes. And what happened? I asked Diane to sign a last chance letter. And that was giving her either a shape up or 30 days. And um, she said she wouldn't sign it because it was illegal and slammed the door on my face. So then I went and I wrote, OK, well, you have 30 days to leave. And if you, let, if you stay after 30 days, you have to pay rent. And um, she didn't want to sign that either. And then I said, then you need to leave for insubordination. You're out now. You get out now. And she says, I don't need to leave. You can't make me leave. You'll have to evict me. Here's the letter. 
Uh, you said, I have been very disappointed in your services. You act like you're a visitor in my home. You are not. You are hired help. Here are your duties. Out of your room by 8, Monday through Friday, help care for all children, making lunch, help with all duties, cleaning, cooking, trips with kids, and anything else mother asks. I will say it's time to clean the house. I want you to steam clean all floors, clean your room, and clean your bathroom. I will inspect. She didn't want to agree to that. Okay, so then you said, all right, I, I want you to leave. And she says no. So you went through a series of things to get her to leave. You mistakenly gave a three-day notice to perform or quit. Yes. And the reason I say mistakenly is you, that wasn't what you intended because that gives her a chance to improve to perform and, and you wanted to stop, not mediate at that point. Yes. So then you gave her a three-day notice to quit. Yes. Okay. And then the police were called because she wouldn't leave and you wanted them to remove her from the premises. Right. Okay. Then you taped a 30-day notice to her door. You said, okay, if, it's about, if I got to give notice, I'm going to... No, you, it was not 30 days. You, you did not tape a 30-day notice to her door no. and put it under her door? No. Well, I, I did, but I told her it doesn't, this doesn't count anymore. The three-day notice is now what it is. So you did give her a 30-day notice? That was the first one. And I, when I found out, so I I'm just trying her, to make a list of what you yeah, did. The 30 yeah. days was I gave. Yeah, the 30. I'm sorry. There's just a lot of information. I'm starting to get a little confused yeah, myself a here. A little hard to track. Yeah. Here. When I found out that I could actually do a three-day notice to quit, that's when I said, "Well, scratch the 30 days. I want you out now." So I'm gonna give the 30, the three days, and that's what happened. Let's take a break. Mom Marcella and Nanny Diane have not talked face to face since the nanny was kick to the curb. Well, Diane is here. We'll find out what she has to say when we come back. Marcello had the Wi-Fi turned off, the cable turned off. She put a lock on the refrigerator. And she locked my bathroom and the laundry room. You do not ever cross Marcella. Nobody does. And later, you also yelled at me and told me I was a dog. Get back in my room. I would never tell you to get back in your room. I'd say get out of my house. As we learned more about Dan, we started to find all the things that she had done to other people. Stories of her childhood, how she used to torture her little sister, throw her in a cactus all the time. Stories about things that she's done to her children. We heard of her putting a knife to somebody and saying, you have to go to sleep sometime. It puts more fear in you. For the first time since Nanny Diane was finally forced to move out of Ralph and Marcella's home, she is here. You, you might guess she tells a very different story. Diane says she was the one who was harassed and tortured during her employment. It was very, very clear to me that you do not ever cross Marcella. Nobody does. A little more than three months after I started working there, Marcella gave me my last chance letter. When I didn't sign it, that's when everything blew up. She had the Wi-Fi turned off, the cable turned off. She put a lock on the refrigerator. And she locked my bathroom and the laundry room. And I come home one night. The house is dark. Suddenly, all the lights went on. Why won't you leave? The whole thing was extremely unpleasant and an extreme violation of my rights. She wouldn't do anything. A nightmare story. A habitual liar. In the media, Marcella has said that the family was afraid of me, that I would poison them, that I might stab her in the middle of the night. She's afraid that I would burn the house down. I never did any behavior that anyone could construe as being threatening in any manner. First of all, they have a nanny cam. So if any of these things were true, why have they not released any footage showing this behavior? Marcella has a very vivid imagination. She just enjoyed the media attention so much, and her story began to get embellished. But she's a con artist. Con artists have a way of switching things around. Her Facebook page had said that she wanted to ruin me. I'm just afraid that she's obsessed with somehow harming me. She's done everything but take a gun and shoot me in the head. Well, Diane, come on out. I 
time. Dr. Phil, how are Please you? Nice to meet you. Let's see, there's Steph out there. Oh. Help you up a little bit. What's your reaction or comment to anything that you've heard so far? I just have a question why she could have notes and I wasn't able to bring any. Well, first of all, she said that I was in my room 90% of the day, beginning at three weeks. Now, Marcella is an extremely impatient person. When I didn't sign the last chance letter, it wasn't five minutes before she was dialing the police officer to have me thrown out on the street. She would not have tolerated any kind of not doing my duties for 10, 12 weeks like she claims. Mm -hmm. And just a week before the last chance letter was the only other time that she spoke to me mm -hmm. uh, regarding my performance. And at that time she said my performance was satisfactory, but she wanted me to do more. She wanted me to do an A+. Plus. You were asked to leave. You were fired. Why not just leave? Why did you stay after you knew they didn't want you there? Well, because when I interviewed, Marcella was very concerned that when my children had children and I became a grandmother, that I would abandon her. So she wanted to have 30 days notice before I quit so that she could find another nanny. And I said, fine, then let's make that reciprocal. But you didn't quit. Reciprocal. You got fired. So that no, certainly relieves you. No, I quit two days before I got fired. But we had agreed that there would be 30 days. But I, I would think that when people are like going to court and calling the police and all that one would kind of think they've waived the 30 days, why did you stay? I was trying to look for someplace else to live. Did you use that 30 days for that purpose? I began searching, but she turned off the internet two days later, so I went to public places. But then when things spun out of control, I hadn't located anything, and then I quit looking. I'm curious if you did the things that she says you did, because she said at a certain point, you, you wouldn't help with the meals, but you were always happy to eat them, that you wouldn't help clean, you wouldn't work around the house, that you just kind of laid around and did nothing. That's a bald-faced lie. I did all dishes every single day, every single meal, the entire time I was there, mm -hmm. until the 6th of June. Mm -hmm. And then she said she didn't want me near her or the children. She didn't want me to do anything, so at that point, I stopped. Some of the things that you said, I mean, they, they're not true. What I, is not true that she said? No breaks and stuff. That wasn't true. You know that wasn't true. Yes, that was true. I was on call constantly. In fact, I gave the show some of Marcella's texts where I was expected to do things at uh, early in the morning and late at night. Way more than an eight-hour shift. But the thing was, you're trying to say it was a consistent eight hours. It was never a consistent eight hours. Yes, it was. Any time that Marcella snapped her fingers, I was supposed to come running. And it didn't matter. Even when I was sick, I was vomiting and I had diarrhea. She didn't care if uh, I got lightheaded and I dropped the baby. She just knew that she wanted to go out and party. So she came home, dropped the baby off at 1 o'clock, and it was my problem. But whether I was ill or not. I'm so sorry that you feel the way that, that way. I really do. I really feel like we made you part of our family. We cooked every meal for you. I, I served you coffee in the morning. I made you a Mother's for Day the, meal. We, we made ended you up Mother's inviting Day you meal. to parties No, with you us. made that for Marcel. No, I just happened to he, I made no, it for you we as invited well. You out I told there. you Happy Mother's Day. We told you, my kids told you Happy Mother's Day. If you had just done the bare minimum, you would still have a place over your head. I did do you way, did way, way beyond the, the bare, bare minimum. minimum. And you threw a tantrum like a child when I asked you to shape up. No, and I you didn't. Slammed the door I didn't door slam anything. Face. I and don't slam doors. When you, and I when don't I asked scream. you to clean the, your bathroom, your bathroom. Well, let's take a break. <laughs> um, when we come back, I want to talk about what was in the letter that Diane sent to Marcella that caused Marcella to feel like she was being extorted. Plus, what happened to the nanny after she was thrown out of Ralph and Marcella's house 
with no money and no place to go. We'll be right back. I'm angry because I was constructively evicted from the Bracamonte's home. This shouldn't have happened. It's just wrong. And later... You tried your best to break me, and I'm here to stand here in front of you and say I am still standing. Diane thinks that she's smarter than everybody. I can guarantee you she'll think she's smarter than Dr. Phil. She was living like a princess in my home, and the only one that reigns in my home is me. And I see that in the past, she's ran over a lot of people, and they just took it. And I'm not going to let her run over anyone anymore. Marcella was really, really moody. The first two weeks I was there, she went into great detail about how she had gotten revenge against every friend that she'd ever had, almost. At that point, I knew there might be a problem. The media dubbed Diane the squatter nanny when she refused to move out of Marcella's house. Diane says, even though Marcella harassed her, removing the soap and toilet paper from her bathroom, she was still willing to take the abuse to avoid living on the streets. Since I was constructively evicted from the Bracamonte's home, I've been homeless. So this is my home. It's very cramped, and it's hard to carry everything with you. Living out in my car is very frustrating and very challenging. There's no bathroom for at least eight hours at a stretch at night. You have to shower when there's some church that allows you to shower, and usually that's once or twice a week. I go to a lot of homeless feedings. On average, I get four or five hours sleep, and that's not restful sleep. Every night when I do this, it's like, I wonder how much longer I'm gonna have to do this because it's just wrong. I'm angry because this shouldn't have happened. Okay, when you say this shouldn't have happened, what do you mean? I mean the whole thing about being homeless. I've been a homeowner my whole life until Mm -hmm. My sisters evicted me from my own property. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a letter that uh, you sent to Marcella, uh, according to her, on June 9th. I will voluntarily agree to leave if each and all of the following conditions are met. My Wi-Fi, TV, air conditioning, water must be continuously on. Bathrooms must be stocked with toilet paper and hand soap. Marcella and children must vacate the premises between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m., I have full access to room, garage, bathroom, and areas of the house between the front door and the bedroom. Given access to healthy food or given $200 to eat out, front door and bedroom door cannot be locked in a manner that prevents entering, and locks cannot be changed. Is that accurate that's accurate and it reflects what my rights were in the law during the 30-day period in the law every benefit every amenity that you had has to remain and you made sure you knew the law before you got to my house right right you knew you made sure you I didn't it. try to set you up if that's what you're trying to insinuate you asking my wife to be out of the house the house that we <laughs> pay for between 8 and 5 p.m. Yes, with and, the children. Yes, and are you aware of her conduct from the time that she served me with the 30-day notice? She would put her that little speaker thing you have right outside my door. The rest of the family went to the far end of the house, so they didn't hear it. You mean blasting music yes. at you? Yes. Not true. This is a woman who cleaned the house, what, twice in the 90 days and suddenly she starts vacuuming outside my door but you know that like that's you. not true though that's i even right. vacuumed your room for you i cleaned your bathroom for you because you refused to do it i was I not to supposed to house. be doing that because my of goodness, the number diane, of I'm hours so, diane do you have do you have have you got evaluated ever stop it i um, mean have you been to the hospital have you ever been evaluated can you answer that please can do you have any mental issues i would like an answer for that one you would? Yes. Yes, I, in the course of my divorce, I've had many, many tests, and they all came out normal. Oh, my goodness. Well, 
Did you try to drive her out? No, I didn't. I, I mean, did you blast her with music? No, I had music on when we were, all the family was there, and it was at a decent But tower. you didn't put a I speaker away. outside her door. No. The police came out twice over that. Did you have the police reports? Did the police officer see that, or is it set up like your dog food? Oh, the dog food happened, too. No. I mean, you are a vicious, mm -hmm. malicious person. What, what happened with the dog food? She sent her four-year-old son to my door. He knocks on my door, and he says, Diane, we have your dinner for you. We have dog food for you. And afterwards, they left, and I opened the door. And Cute there were though. three cans of dog food outside the door. You also yelled at me and told me I was a dog, get back in my room that weekend when I dared I, to leave it. I would never tell you to get back in your room. I'd say get out of my house. No, you told me to get back get in the room. Get out of my house. Have you filed a lot of lawsuits? Quite a few. You've been in at least 37 lawsuits. Do you plan to sue them? And later... She looks in the law and she finds out what the law says she needs to prove and she just lists all those things and then alleges that that's what we did. She did that when she sued us for wrongful death of our father. Is what they're saying accurate? Not even close. Diane told me one time when my wife was with uh, our son on a camping trip that if my wife and I were split up, and I ever needed somebody in court to testify against her, that she would do it. And I looked at her and I, uh, I laughed. I was like, no, I was like, okay, well, whatever. And she's like, no, I'm serious. Do you plan to sue them? Well, I take a wait and see attitude. It, it uh, approach, it depends upon how damaged I am. If I go and when I get my pension <laughs> and I try to rent an apartment, and they go, oh, you're that nanny. No, we're not renting to you no matter what. Do you feel that they have slandered you or defamed you? Absolutely. What, what is it they've said that is defamatory? Practically everything they said. When they said that uh, the initial news reports, when they were saying that I was eating their food, she had a lock on the refrigerator, but, and she also had a nanny cam. What else have they said that's defamatory? Well, the part about not working after three weeks, that's nonsense. Okay. I was working hours and hours mm. and hours. The good news for you is if, if these are the things that you feel like they've said that are defamatory or slanderous, you've corrected them here. <laughs> so in, in that way, you've negated that impact because you've set the record straight, we've given you the opportunity to, to do that. Um, they, they have described you as litigious. Are you litigious? No, all of the cases are related to what my sisters have done and right. my divorce. It was all the family assets. Well, have you filed a lot of lawsuits against people? Quite a few. How many would you guess? You've been in at least 37 lawsuits. At least. Some of them I was the defendant. Yeah. Because I have a book here of lawsuits that are a matter of public record. Um, and we did not find 37. We, we stopped looking. But we found 27 of these. Seven were dismissed for lacking merit or standing. And of the 22 that we have, you represented yourself in 20 of those. And you had a, we found that you had an attorney that represented you in two of the things that we found. But one of the lawsuits you filed was against your attorney. Mm -hmm. Right? And you are listed on the vexatious litigant list in California, right? Yes, I am. Which means you don't have the access to the court system unless approved by a senior judge because to get on that list, it's been determined that you have filed uh, frivolous, meritless, or baseless lawsuits meant to harass. You mentioned your sisters and that you've had some of this has been probate related and to them. Well, Diane's sister and brother-in-law are here. Uh, they've not seen her in six years because they say they're afraid of this nanny. We're going to find out why Diane has filed several lawsuits against them and even blames them for being homeless. 
We'll be right back. My sister Diane has a long history of filing lawsuits. She has sued my family approximately 10 times. For the past 14 years, Diane has held our family hostage. When Diane feels like she's not getting her way, it seems like she just files a lawsuit. And if that fails, she files another lawsuit. And she keeps on time after time after time, draining everyone else's resources. Well, former live-in nanny Diane recently made headlines when she refused to leave her employer's house even after they had fired her. And she's not only at odds with them, Diane's sister Donna and brother-in-law Bob say they have been in and out of court with Diane for the past 13 years and feel like she's holding them captive with her lawsuits. Take a look. Diane has created havoc in our family. Diane is my oldest sister. She has sued my family approximately 10 times. I think lawsuits are hard enough, but when it's your sister doing it, it's incredibly painful. When Diane feels like she's not getting her way, it seems like she just files a lawsuit, and if that fails, she files another lawsuit, and she keeps on time after time after time, draining everyone else's resources. My sister Diane has a long history of filing lawsuits against other people. She has sued doctors, nursing homes, hospitals, family, minor children of the family. She's even sued a judge. As far as I know, she has sued at least 50 times. It seems like she just wants to cause pain and heartache. For the past 14 years, Diane has held our family hostage with our time, our money, our emotions. She has done horrific things. You had real trepidation about coming here today. Why? She doesn't need a reason to sue. She sues. She makes things up. She looks in the law, and she finds out what the law says she needs to prove, and she just lists all those things and then alleges that that's what we did. She did that when she sued us for wrongful death of our father. Is what they're saying accurate? Not even close. Tell me what is accurate. <laughs> I had put everything in the family trust, and their strategy was that they were going to say that the trust was revoked. And they foreclosed on a bogus trustee that was on my main house, my, my family home. They took every single thing from me. Excuse they me? went into the house, and they didn't even do an unlawful detainer. They just took all of my property, all of my photographs, all my jewelry. I would like to say that I'm sorry, but you are lying. That has all been litigated repeatedly, repeatedly litigated, and you lost. <laughs> Nothing. You did not win. You tried your best. In fact, you tried your best to break me, and I'm here to stand here in front of you and say I am still standing. and a half years of my life, of the time with my family that I can never get back. And I have watched for 27 years you sue other people. It has been horrible to watch your actions. You have been out of line. It's time for you to stop. And let me ask you, Go ahead. If, if you had not had your plan to steal everything I Absolutely owned from me, not. if you would have followed the family trust, the family I would trust not was revoked have lost. when you caused the divorce. I didn't cause the divorce. You caused the divorce. What you've done to me, you first did to our mother. And she ultimately me? died as a result true. of your abuse. None of that is true. All of it's true. Only okay. in Diane land. The judgments you have aren't worth the powder to blow them to Timbuktu if the law is followed. <laughs> the well, speaking of the law, we have a legal expert here, uh, Chris Chatham, who is a legal consultant to the Dr. Phil Show. He's going to try and sort some of this out. We'll be right back. <laughs> Our resident legal consultant, Chris Chatham, is here. He is a licensed attorney here in the state of California. And uh, Chris, how does all of this happen? How 
did this couple here hire someone to help with the children and wind up in a national headline battle? When you get into disputes like this, you got to have a written agreement to reflect what the parties intended at the beginning rather than where you are now. The moral of the story is you need to be real careful that you have a clear understanding with people you do business with, particularly <clears throat> if they have access to your home and your family, particularly if you're putting your life on hold to move in. There has to be clear understandings. You've had other nannies, right? Yes. Did you get along with those nannies? Yeah. We got, you know, you live with people. But yeah, for the most part, 90% of the time, we got along. Yeah. There was some talk about Becky. Becky. Uh, and Becky was going to be here today on the show. But then she, actually, you canceled her. I didn't. I just said she has a dog and she's concerned about her dog and... Well, no, actually, we interviewed her and like five minutes after we finished her interview, you called and said, I need to clarify a few of her statements. She called me and she said, I told them that, you know, at the, at the end, and she's like, and I don't remember if I told her um, at what part, but that I really didn't mind getting paid because, um, or not at the end, because I did pay her when I've worked for this whole time that I had her, I paid her. And that was also a lower wage because of the room and board. And but she was fine with that. But then you called us and canceled her. I didn't call and cancel her. Oh, actually you did. I'll have the producer come out that took the phone call from you. I wanted her to come on, but I said, if you can't make it, then you can't make it. She says, I'll come if they can put my dog up, but I don't have anyone to watch my dog. We were going to talk to her on the phone. Oh, no, she can talk. I told her, talk. I told Joni, talk to her on the phone. But why did you call us and say she can't participate? No, I said she has dog issues. It's the first time I've ever had one guest call and cancel another one. I didn't cancel. I wanted her to be here. Uh, Amy, was this guest canceled? Yes, the guest was canceled. I didn't talk and by who? Uh, my associate producer, Joni, did the pre-interview. And then afterwards, um, she t Joni told me Marcella called her and wanted to clarify some statements. And then five minutes after that call, she called again and said that that Becky could not do the show because she had to watch her own dogs. I didn't call and cancel her. I said You, you I said, didn't call and say she, she has I to watch know, her dogs. I didn't know that me saying she needs to watch her dog was me canceling her. It was made pretty clear that she needed to not be, she needed to watch her dogs and that she was busy. And this demonstrates the problems I had with them the entire time I was working with them. I think it's just a huge misunderstanding. misunderstanding. I don't think there's any misunderstanding at all. Did the guest call and cancel, or did, or did Marcella call? Marcella called and canceled the guest. You can call her. I didn't. I did call her, but you canceled her. I'd be talking to her right now. Well, our audience has some strong reactions to this story. We're going to find out what they have to say next. We'll grab it. Well, viewers have been watching this live as it's happening. TNN come and says, come on, people. They're both coupled. Mom got a nanny from Craigslist to work for free, and nanny took it and ran with it. Uh, Cobra Girl AZ said they were both looking to take advantage of each other. I don't advocate for either, but the nanny knew what she was doing. Richard Cruz on TV says, this is a big wake-up call for anyone looking to have a live-in nanny. You need to use a service to help protect yourself. 
Um, you know, I have always said, I, you know, you guys have heard me say this from the first year I was on Oprah, which my God was 18 years ago. <laughs> I said, you got to be careful who you let in your life. You got to be careful who you let in your life. You got to be careful who you let in your life. You got We all have to be careful. And if you had known this woman had filed 37 lawsuits against people, dozens of them against her family, it might have had an impact on you. Right. If you had known things about her that you didn't know, I, I don't know, maybe you'd have taken the job anyway, maybe you wouldn't have. But I can tell you this. Run into the courthouse every time you have a dispute can shock you because you never know what those people are going to do either. Well, guys, we've got to stop. I thank everybody for being here today. More information on drphil.com. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Good to meet y'all. Thanks so much, Bob. Good to meet you.